Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. This comes from Loveland, Colorado. I'm going to play the entirety of the video and then I'll go back and talk about things that are going on to better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are done right and are done wrong. Without further ado, here we go. Hello, my name is Bob Tyser, Chief of Police for the City of Loveland, Colorado. As part of our police departments and city's pledge to be transparent with the public, I am sharing with you information regarding an officer-involved shooting that occurred on Monday, August 16, 2021, on Tennessee Street in Loveland. You are about to hear a 911 call and see relevant body-worn camera footage from officers involved. Some of the video, as well as audio, has been either blurred or redacted to protect the substantial privacy interests of the individuals involved in this incident. This critical incident response team investigation, also known as CERT, is being conducted by Fort Collins Police Services under the direction of the 8th Judicial District Attorney. This is an active investigation and the overall understanding of the incident may change as remaining evidence may be collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies and the law until all the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution. The audio you are about to hear and the images you are about to see may be disturbing for some audiences. Your discretion is advised. 911, what is the address of the emergency? 1620 Tennessee Street. Okay, repeat that one more time for verification, please. 1620 Tennessee Street. Thank you. We have a young man that's having a metal breakdown. He's oh. breaking everything and throwing stuff. We need assistance oh. immediately, please. Okay. Yeah, He's dead. a danger to himself and us. Is he a um, relative or? He, I'm his guardian. He's 19 years old. Okay. Does anybody have any weapons? Or does he have any weapons? No. He's just throwing everything and breaking everything. Okay. Has he hurt any person or just some items? No. No. He has attempted suicide on multiple times. Oh, I just heard that. Mm. Yeah. Wow. He's just destroying my house. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, we'll get them out there quickly for you to stand the line with me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. He's going to need to be uh, committed. Yeah. Did something happen to him today to get him irritated or anything? He's mad at me because I asked him to do his chores. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has he um, been drinking or doing drugs or anything? No, no, not at all. Okay. And what's his name? Alex Domina, D-O-M-I-N-A. And what's your name? Judy Domina. I'm his legal guardian. Okay. He's been institutionalized for years. He just came to live with me in June. Oh, okay. Alrighty, and where exactly is he at in the house right now? He's here in my backyard. He's destroying the patio furniture. Mm. Is he using any tools or anything to destroy stuff? Or does no, he no, no. He has a piece of glass now. Mm. Glass tabletop. Mm. Oh. And we're, we're staying our distance. Good. He's he's big. He's 244 pounds. Okay. But please, please handle him with care. He, it's a mental health. He's trying to break the glass door now. With his feet, yeah. we need something. Yep, they're hurting. Him, so. They're coming as fast as they can now. Okay. Alex, don't break that glass door, please. Alex, Alex. Mm. He, he's to break the glass door. He broke it. Mm. He broke the glass door. Oh gosh, okay. Where? Right there. I don't see him. Do you think he's going to try and take off on foot or anything? I don't think so. Okay. How will he be with the police? Will he be cooperative or will he be a problem? He probably won't be. Okay. The police went by, but they didn't stop. Okay, yeah. I have an officer that was in the area on another call, but he is going to, he was coming back around to your house, so... 
He will be there shortly. He's got a knife. He does have a knife now? Okay. Yes, he has a knife. Is he threatening anyone with it, or what's he doing? He says he's not going to go back. How you handle this determines how you will deal with the pattern. The neighbors are trying to talk to him that are his friends. Okay, good. Here's the police. Okay, I'll let you go there, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, bye bye. How's it going today, brother? You put the knife down for me? And let's just talk, man. Just talk to me, bro. I'm not taking you anywhere, dude. I just want to talk to you. Put the knife down on the table, come talk to me. I ain't being tricked by that bullshit. I'm not tricking you, dude. I'm not. Okay. I'm not taking you anywhere. Six still verbal and cooperative, not dropping the knife. <laughs> Alex, man, I need you to stop and just talk to me, bro. Put the knife down, brother. Stay over there. Do not come near me. Don't come near me. One at gunpoint, he's not stopping. Don't come near me. Stop. Stop, Alex! Stop, man! Don't make... 236, shot fired. Where's the knife? Right here underneath. You got bed coming? Medicine. Okay. You're hang tight. Where is it shot in the tummy? Say, say, right there. Do not grab the knife. Lay down flat. Lay on your back. Do not grab the knife. Lay on your back. 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 Lay you got I got him. Okay, let me. Alex. <laughs> Alex, move your left arm out. Roll over. Move your left arm out. Okay, put right there. Stay right there. Don't move, okay? Lay on your back for me. Lay on yeah. your, can you lay on your back? Yeah. Try. <laughs> Try. Sit up. No, you need to lay down, okay? Mm. Lay down. I need to address. Mm. No, I need to address what you got going on, okay? Okay. Mm. Let me see, okay. Hold on. Let me see what you got going on. Okay. okay. Hold on. Help me. I am. It. I'm helping you. Get out. Get out. Mom. Do you have that pressure thing? That's. This is all ruined. You're okay. Keep breathing for me. Keep talking to me, okay? Keep talking to me. You're okay. Okay? You're okay. It's not bleeding bad, okay? No, you 
gotta stay down. I can't breathe. I know. Keep. Just uh, lay. Okay. Uh, this one's not gonna work. Uh, I got gotcha. you. You're okay. Uh, Do you have uh, you have a pressure thing or uh, this is all gum? We just need it right on there. Okay. Uh, You're okay. You're okay. Uh, it's not bleeding bad. Okay. You're okay. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Where's the knife? It's over there. Get the knife. Help me. I know. We already got it. Okay. Calm down, because that's gonna stop the bleeding or help the bleed. Okay. Okay. You're okay. Well, I need a hand. Yeah, I know. Hold on, buddy. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, dude, okay. we're gonna have you lay on the ground. I haven't checked the backside. You got it. I'm not sure what. I don't know what all that is. What's your name, bud? Alexander. Alexander? Okay. This is not the bleeding. Okay, we're good. We're good. You're, You're doing okay. fine. You're okay. Okay? Uh, hold on. I can't breathe. I know you can't. It's all right. You gotta sit up. It's okay. I gotta well, sit up. No, no, no you no, gotta no, stay right laying. Okay. Laying is better for you, okay? Hey, we're gonna pull you over on your stomach, okay? Yeah, we gotta check your backside, okay? Okay, hurry up. Okay. Can you slowly roll over? I'm not seeing an exit. No, oh, we don't have an exit. You got it. Just seriously. Talk to me. What's your Mom! Name? She's okay. You're okay. Hold on. You're okay. You're doing good. You, okay? Okay? Armpit. Where's Matt? Are they coming? Mm -hmm. Up there. I need a tourniquet. Oh, what? Tourniquet. I think that one's okay. Okay, you're fine. You're doing good. Okay. okay it's gonna hurt. Okay. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah, we gotta tighten this up on you. You can hold my hand if you need to. Okay. You're doing good. Evie, can you find more chest seals? Here, I got one right here. Got yeah, another one? Can you, open it up? you got it, Evie? Mm. What are we going to do with that one on these? Yeah. This right one, in this, this area. right here looks like. Okay. We got meds right outside, too. Okay. You're doing fine. Mm. Good, you're doing good. Okay. Good. Mm. Is somebody with Eddie? Yeah, yeah sorry, sir. Okay. It hurts. Yeah, no, it hurts. It's, it's gonna you. hurt for a little bit, okay? Help me. You're doing good. Okay, we got you. Any time it's legs? Um. No. Let's get him away from the fence here. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Got and the turn the kit. Okay, we're actually on a different team. Do you want to check the back again? Yeah. Uh, uh, Mom! So, we got, just something there. We just need pressure on that one. That's okay. You're okay. You're okay. There it is. Just right yourself. there? Okay. Nothing legs, though, right? No, nope, nothing on legs. Go on, hurry up! You're okay, buddy. You're doing you fine. Medics here. You're getting some stuff for you. Okay. You want me to hold that, or are you good? I'm good. Okay. Uh, Mom. Hold on, buddy. You're okay. Uh, just relax. Okay. Relax. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is. Or we just be That's so me. That looks like out. Yeah. Well, what's over here? Well, we think he had a knife, so I don't know if there's stab, stabbing. Mm -hmm. well, I hear a gunshot. Mm -hmm. Just over here. No, we yeah, had so a shot. Got shot in the chest. He got shot right here. He shot right here. And then we got some. And then he's got stab wounds. Sure. Keep your leg down, okay? We'll just keep it down. What's your name? You're okay, buddy. Wait, hey, hey, we're not gonna fight. We're here to help you, okay? Uh, it's okay. Hey, man, breathe for me. Breathe for me. Mm. Mm. Wound over here, but it's not bleeding too bad. Mm. Keep breathing for me, though, okay? You got He just take me to the hospital. We will. We're trying, buddy. We gotta wait for an ambulance, okay? Mm. You're doing okay. You're fine. Just keep talking. God, these okay? set me up, please.
You gotta It'll make it better. You're good. No, it won't. It's not like we're recording. You're good. Uh, and we got some stab wounds, uh, stab wounds. Arms uh, and backs. But no exit wound. Uh, yep. Uh, What's up, brother? Is this a type of chest? This is a chest that's coming off, okay? Okay. I went on the side with this. Okay. This one Just relax. This one in the chest with the bullet. Okay. There's one in the arm as well. It's with tourniquets for. Okay. Can't find an exit on the back. It looks like a stab here. Why is it taking so long? We're evaluating you. Okay, you're doing, you. okay. You're doing, okay. You're doing fine. You're still good. Yeah, we're just waiting. You're still kind of combative. Have you yeah. checked for an exit one? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, it looks like it's bulging on the back on his left shoulder. Okay. But it doesn't come out. Okay. Hold on. Hey, don't you're move, bud. You're doing okay. You're okay. Right now, you've got rest on the left and the right. High fives. What's your name, bud? What's your name? You're fine. You're doing fine, okay? Here, we're gonna we're gonna help you up, okay? So you can get onto them. You can go to the ambulance, okay? You're gonna move for us. Ready? We're gonna lift down three. Whenever you guys are ready. Sorry, go ahead. Can you roll for me a little bit, bud? You gotta come this way, okay? There you go. Good job. Good job. It's gonna hurt for a little bit, okay? Watch his feet. He's trying to catch. I got a gunshot. He's got a gunshot. He's got a gunshot. You guys ready? One, two, three, two. I got him going back out. Is he good? Hang in there, buddy. Hey, talk to me, bud. Uh, uh, the old tight is going on. I know. You're doing good. Coming up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Whenever we get there. Okay. The six point this thing on the way. Uh, Alright, my friend. He's okay. He won't kick you. You're good, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gonna have to pick it up a little. She can go to the hospital, not in the bus. We have provided you this information to build or enhance community trust in your police department. My goal is to ensure the transparency this department owes the community while preserving the integrity of the criminal investigatory process led by the CERT team. Officer Luzon is on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of the criminal investigation. Once the CERT team finishes its work, an administrative or an internal investigation into this shooting will follow. I hope you have found this information useful and informative. Thank you. that replay drop. Hello, that. my oh, name yeah. is Bob. So, um, lost to say about this video. Um, the beginning part of it, the, I'm going to save the mental health stuff for last and we'll just straight jump into, um, the tactics part of it. Hey, Alex. How's it going today, brother? You put the knife down for me? And let's just talk, man. 
Just talk to me, bro. I'm not taking you anywhere, dude. I just want to talk to you. Put the knife. So he starts off with um, de escalation. Both his hands are open, there's nothing in his hands. He's talking to him, trying to get him to de escalate. On the table, come talk to me. I ain't being tricked by that bullshit. I'm not tricking you, dude. I'm not. Okay. I'm not taking you anywhere. Two thirty six, still verbal, not cooperative, not dropping the knife. Alex, man, I need you to stop and just talk to me, bro. Put the knife down, brother. Stay over there. Do not come near me. Don't come near me. So at this point, he's armed with a knife. He's been acting aggressive and hostile. And now he starts coming towards the officer. This officer draws his gun and points it at him and tells him not to come to him. Do not come near him. One at gunpoint, he's not stopping. Don't come near me. Stop. Stop, Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. Stop. Watch his walking. Not, do not come near me. So it's a slow Don't walk at this me. point. One at gunpoint, he's not stopping. Don't come near me. Stop. Stop, Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. Come near me. Stop. Then his, his pace Stop, changes. Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. Come near me. Stop. Stop, Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. Come near me. Stop. Stop, Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. Me. Stop. Stop, Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. Don't come near me. Stop. Stop, Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. Don't come near me. Stop. Stop, Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. Come near me. Stop. Stop, Alex. Stop, man. Don't make. So he's walking, and up into this point, he changes. He starts to take a more aggressive stance a more combative type of stance and he starts to um go into a what i would describe as sort of a charging type of stance like he's going to rush at this officer this officer has no choice but to use deadly physical force you have to meet deadly physical force with deadly physical force He attempted to de-escalate the situation. Both hands were open. No weapons in his hands. Just trying to open dialogue with this person and, and, get, him, and get him to talk. The person says he's not going anywhere. Officer assures him that he's not taking him anywhere. Um, this person says that you know he's not going to fall for that trickery. And the officer assures him he's not tricking him. Uh, the officer is doing everything he can at the beginning of this to de-escalate the situation and get some type of peaceful resolve when while this person is acting aggressive and hostile destroying stuff and is armed with a weapon he starts walking towards the officer with the knife and refuses multiple commands to stop very clear commands there's no mistaking what he was telling him to do. Stop, do not come near me. He continued to come near him. And when he got to a certain point, his gait changed. Like he was going to start to rush towards the officer. He started to take a more aggressive, combative stance. The officer had absolutely no choice but to use deadly physical force to prevent him from coming at him any further and attacking him and stabbing, slashing and seriously physically injuring and or killing the officer. No problem whatsoever with the use of deadly physical force uh, in this incident. 236, shot fired. The 
the second person. Get out of the way! 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 Get everybody out! Get back! Out! Out! Get out of the way! Out! Are you good? Keep your. Where's the knife? Right here underneath. You got bed coming? Okay. You're. Hang tight. Where is he shot in the tummy? Say. Should we? Right there. Do not Don't. grab the knife, Alex. Lay down flat. Lay on your Do back. Do not grab the knife. Lay on your Put back. Put your arms out to the side. Put your arms out to the side. Okay. Okay. Just relax. I gotta get a pressure thing on him. You got. I got him. Okay, let me. Alex. Alex, move your left arm out. Roll over. Move your left arm out. Okay, put right there. Stay right there. Don't move, okay? Lay on your back. So she takes the knife, and that's a, that's a pretty good size knife. Left arm out. Okay, put right there. Stay right there. Don't move. Ah. Okay? Lay on your, Try your left arm out. Keep it right there. Stay right there. So yeah, that's I mean that's a pretty decent sized knife. That's a <laughs> that's a Michael Myers Halloween kind of knife right there. Um, she takes it and don't she move, okay? throws it. Lay on your back for me. But it doesn't go very far, and then she lay on, can you lay on your back? Further away. Try, try. No, you need to lay down, okay? Lay down. I need to address. At this point, I believe that she should have went ahead and cuffed him, cuffed his arms behind his back. Um, this guy, he he was just a, a threat to this officer's life and came at him in an aggressive manner with a knife. And just because now he is rolling on the ground moaning doesn't mean the fight is completely out of him. Now, of course, we see throughout the the video that he doesn't really uh, try to start fighting, but in this instance, you, you have no idea if he's just going to remain um, compliant. And so he definitely has the ability um, to start fighting. He can move, he can sit up. Um, she should have, they should have secured him and put him in restraints cuff him up. That way, if he does decide to start fighting, it's extremely difficult for him to start fighting. Um, but they, she, for whatever reason, did not want to do that. And I think that was a mistake. No, I need to address what you got going on, okay? Okay. Let me see, okay. Hold on. Let me see what you got going on. Okay. okay. Hold on. Another mistake is she did not put gloves on. Um, when you are dealing with any person who has blood, you have to assume that they have some type of bloodborne pathogen. You have to assume the worst and that they have AIDS and hepatitis. You just you have to assume that to protect yourself. And lots of people um, who who make bad decisions in life. Um, they end up, you know, they make other kind of bad decisions like having lots of sex with, um, other people unprotected. And so, or using dirty needles. And so they could have some type of bloodborne pathogen. And, you know, if you get, you get AIDS, you get AIDS. I mean, there's, there's not not much that uh, the common person can do once you once you catch that um, hepatitis. So you need to protect yourself and protect your family and and wear your proper uh, BSI body substance isolation, your proper PPE, um, personal protective equipment. If you got latex gloves, nitro gloves put the damn things on before you touch a person who has bodily fluids on them. Help me I am. It. I'm helping you. Get out. Get out. Mom. Do you have a pressure thing that's... This is all ruined. Yeah. 
You're okay. Keep breathing for me. Keep talking to me, okay? Keep talking to me. You're okay. Okay? You're okay. It's not bleeding bad, okay? No, you gotta stay down. I can't breathe. I know. Keep. Just lay. Okay. This one's not gonna work. I got you. You're okay. Do you have do you have a pressure thing or this is all gum? We just need it right on there. Okay? You're okay. You're okay. It's not bleeding bad, okay? Yeah, you're okay. Okay? Gotcha. Where's the knife? It's over there. Get the knife! Help me! I know. We already got it, okay? Calm down because that's going to stop the bleeding or help the bleed, okay? Okay? You're okay. Well, I need a hand. I know. Hold on, buddy. Hold on. Hey, dude, okay. we're going to lay on the ground. She's obviously not very confident in her medical oh. skills. <laughs> now she decides to you got get it? gloves out. I'm not sure what. This officer here is also making a mistake uh, by not having gloves on. I don't know what all that is. <laughs> What's your name, bud? Alexander. Alexander. Okay. This is not the bleed Okay, we're good. We're good. You're, You're doing okay. fine. You're okay. Okay? Uh, hold on. I can't breathe. I know you can't. It's all right. You gotta sit up. It's okay. I gotta well, sit up. No, no, no you no, gotta no, stay right laying. Okay. Laying is better for you, okay? Hey, we're gonna pull you over on your stomach, okay? Yeah, we gotta check your backside, okay? Okay, hurry up. So this officer doesn't even have his gloves all the way on yet, and he's touching them and doing stuff. He's got blood all, all over these okay. gloves. Can you he's slowly trying roll over? to put them back, put them on the correct way after all are already using them. Mm. You know, this person has been shot. They can no, wait, don't have an as far as I'm concerned. Mm. They did what they did, and they got what they got. Just seriously. If it takes you Mom! two minutes to put gloves on, then guess what? You're waiting there for two minutes uh, before any other medical aid can be rendered. So they they did what they did. They got what they got. If it you take your time to put your gloves on. Now, I'm not saying take an hour to put your gloves on or anything like that, but um, get your gloves on. Get them on properly. Get yourself protected before you start touching all that blood. There, there's, there's no rule that says you got to do everything all quick. Make sure that you are safe. Okay. You're okay. Hold on. You're okay. You're doing good. Okay. Okay. Armpit. Where's Matt? Are they coming? There. I need a tourniquet. So, we, we can see a little bit of blood from where he's been shot, and uh, up in here. Even though it's blurred out, you can still tell that there is not a lot of bleeding. You can tell that there is not any arterial bleeding going on. However, someone says, get a tourniquet. A what? Tourniquet? Okay, you're fine. You're doing good. Okay. Okay, it's gonna hurt, okay? You're okay. You're okay. So I think it's great. I mean, really great that these officers are carrying tourniquets. But I don't think they fully understand uh, when tourniquets are to be used. And from what I can see in here, it doesn't look like a tourniquet needs to be used on this guy. There's nothing that indicates that he has severe bleeding coming out of his extremity. So that's kind of a, a waste of a tourniquet, in my opinion. I tighten this up on you. You can hold my hand if you need to, okay? You're doing good. Evie, can you find um, more chest seals? Um, here, I got one right here. The most of what they can do for him is provide occlusive dressings to his thoracic cavity, where he has holes at, using the chest seals. Um, that's, I mean, and then putting a, a, um, 
addressing around the gunshot wound that is in his arm. That's the extent of what they can do. Unless someone has, is trained in um, using something uh, beyond that, let's say, for example, a decompression needle, um, which obviously you can't tell from the video if he's showing any signs and symptoms that would uh, indicate the need for a decompression needle. But um, if there was a, a need for that and they had it, if they're trained to use that, then they could have, you know, used that. But uh, they're kind of maxed out, so to speak, on what they're going to be able to do to him pre-hospital wise. They've put occlusive dressing on him. Um, they put a tourniquet on him, even though I don't think he needed a tourniquet. He just needed a pressure dressing around the wound uh, on his arm. That's it. That's all, all they're going to be able to do with their basic um, level of knowledge and equipment. And even when the ambulance gets there, um, of course, the paramedics, you know, they can um, be able to use the decompression needle if, you know, there's any signs that, that indicate that it's needed. But other than that, they're still going to be somewhat limited in what they can do. Um, it's just a matter of getting him to the hospital at this point and um, using technology to see inside of him and see see what the bullets have done to him. But I think they're doing um, pretty good um, with their medical care on him. They've rendered medical aid. Um, I, I think they went a little overboard on using a tourniquet. I don't think the tourniquet was needed, but they've done everything they could for him. Got another one? You got it. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do with that one on these? Yeah. This right one, in this, this area. Right here looks like. Okay. We got meds right outside, too. Okay. You're doing fine. Good. You're doing okay. good. The ambulance just showed up. Is somebody with Eddie? Yeah, yeah sorry, sir. Okay. Yeah, it hurts. It's gonna hurt for a little bit, okay? Help me. You're doing good. Okay, we got you. Any time it's like? Um. No. Let's get him away from the fence here. Ready? Yep. Yeah. 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 And the tourniquet. Turn okay, we're actually on different two by seven. Turn back on. Do we need him on his back again? You want to check the back again? Yeah. Uh, uh, Mom. So, we got just something there. We just need pressure yeah. on that one. That's okay. You're okay. You're okay. There it is. Just right yourself. there. Okay. Yeah. Nothing on legs, right? No, nothing on legs. Come on, hurry up! You're okay, buddy. You're doing you fine. Medics here. You're getting some stuff for you. Okay. You want me hold that, or are you good? I'm good. Okay. Mom. Hold on, buddy. You're okay. Yeah, Just relax. Okay. Okay. That is. Or if we just be That's so me. That looks like out. Yeah. Well, what's over here? Well, we think he had a knife, so I don't know if there's stab, stabbing. Mm. Well, we hear gunshots mm. just over here. No, we yeah, had so a shot. He got shot in the chest. Oh. He got shot right here. He shot right here. And then we got some. And then he got stab wounds. Sure. Stab wounds. Keep your leg down, okay? We we'll just keep it down. What? Yeah. So from the medical standpoint, like I said, I think they've they've done the best that they could for him, and um, now it's on to. A higher level of care to get there and get him to the hospital and give him that more advanced treatment. So from this, um, like I said, I, I believe that uh, the use of force was absolutely necessary um, in order for the officer to protect himself. Um, the only the only negative thing I guess I have to say about this is they did not cuff him up and and restrain him so that if he did decide to start fighting, it would make it much more difficult for him to start fighting or be effective at fighting them. Now, the circumstances involved. So 911 call, um, the woman calling is his grandmother. And he's living with his grandmother, and she says in the 911 call that uh, he's been institutionalized for years, 
and that he just started living with her in June. Looking at some news articles, the family's attorney has said that he has gone through years of serious abuse and that he is developmentally delayed. Now, <clears throat> of course, <laughs> after shootings, family attorneys are always going to uh, play that little violin and, and really paint their client to be the world's most um, most victim, whatever, um, most innocent person, you know, the truest, truest victim of them all. Uh, the, the person, the attorney, the, fa the family's attorney even had the audacity to say that um, he was he was not doing anything threatening and he was just walking with a knife and um, <laughs> he had a he had the right to walk around with a knife, and he wasn't doing anything to harm the officers or anything like that. Um, complete asinine shit that is very typical of family attorneys after a officer-involved shooting has occurred. So, obviously, you just can't believe whatever the family attorney says. Now, um, it, could he have some, some mental issues? Uh, Absolutely, he could, but does that um, excuse him, or does that um, does that put him in a situation where he has an exemption to have uh, officers not use deadly physical force against him when he is presenting a deadly physical force? Absolutely not. Um, I don't care how developmentally challenged you are you come at someone with a knife and acting aggressive and hostile you damn right you're gonna have uh, deadly physical force used against you I don't care how crazy you are there is no exemptions in in use of dead deadly force laws that says well you can use deadly physical force unless the person is mentally handicapped no that that doesn't exist so this argument that the family's trying to provide that you know he was he was developmentally delayed is is just bullshit. Um, the grandmother had mentioned that he's been institutionalized for years. Now he's 19 years old, and when she when you say years, I am imagining more than just a couple years. So. I don't think that, you know, his problem started when he turned 18 years of age. His problem started from childhood, from in a, being a teenager. Now, each state is, is different in how they treat uh, juveniles in regards to the criminal justice system and with the... Uh, child services so each state in each state's a little bit different in how they and how they use that terminology as well so but one thing that pretty much all states have in common is the fact that juvenile records are secret you you can't look up uh, juvenile records they're not public you can't even do open records request on on juvenile stuff they, they treat it like it's like it's you know CIA case files or something like it's it's stupid and I hate it but um, there's really no way of finding out uh, his history because all his juvenile records are shrouded in secrecy now when she says that he's been institutionalized for years that could mean that could mean a few different things um, I don't think that it means he's been in the foster system for years Although, I would not be surprised if, at some point, he could have been involved in the foster system. Um, removed from home, removed from the care of his parents, and then put into foster care. And then his grandma could have eventually gotten some rights to uh, keep him. But who, who knows if that's, you know, even a, you know, a possibility for him. But... When it comes to being institutionalized, uh, there's a couple 
Well, not a couple. There's a few different things for juveniles uh, that can occur. From the criminal aspect, uh, they there is you know there are kid jails, uh, juvenile detention centers that he could have been at, and then those are you know they're jail type settings. Just like when an adult gets arrested and taken to jail, a juvenile detention center can look just like that and be operated very similar to that as well. There are also, um, in some states, what they call um, youth development centers. Um, and these are still within the criminal justice system, and they are places that that don't necessarily have a very uh, quintessential jail-type setting. You know, when you think of a jail, you think of, you know, these prison bars and uh, cell doors and, and stuff like that. Uh, these these places, although they are part of the juvenile criminal justice, they're not exactly like a jail, but they are still being held by the state as if they are a, a prisoner. And... These places focus more on what's called treatment. Now, a lot of states believe that juvenile offenders are victims. They are victims of their environment, and they need trauma-informed care because these juveniles have been traumatized as a child, and that's an explanation of why they commit crimes and do what they do. So the treatment aspect for these places can revolve around treating them as if there is something medically wrong with them. And it has sort of a clinical kind of um, spin on it. And they can do things like hold a job uh, within these little development centers um, and do stuff like work in the kitchen and clean dishes or do laundry or uh, do maintenance around the facility like mowing grass and stuff like that. Basic, you know, basic chores. And they get uh, counseling, if you can, you know, call it that. They'll go to a counselor and they'll do group sessions and things like that and get their treatment while they're quote unquote incarcerated. The other um, way that they could be institutionalized is they committed a crime, but instead of being put in a jail type setting, they're put in more of a um, hospital type of setting. And I'm not talking like a normal hospital that you go to, but it's, it's a more uh, secured place that still has locked doors and whatnot. They're not obviously free to leave. Uh, they're being held by the by the government, but the place they're being held at is not so much like a jail. It's more like a hospital, and they do kind of the same stuff with treatment. They provide treatment for these offenders, and you can have juveniles who, you know, they'll uh, like a, a little boy who rapes his sister or something like that. Instead of sending that little boy to a juvenile detention center. Uh, they can put them in this uh, hospital type of setting, a, a behavioral um, health type of center where they are um, confined. They're not free to leave or do anything, and they're given treatment um, for, for what they've done. Now, of course, we don't know the background on this person and, and why they were institutionalized for, you know, years. But those are the possibilities um, that exist on why, you know, or how they could have been institutionalized. They could have either been in a hospital type setting for some type of crime they committed, or they could have been in a hospital type of setting because um, of other, you know, mental issues and whatnot that are pretty severe. Now. Not all kids who have mental issues stay in some type of hospital setting. A lot of them are released back to public, and they can go to public schools. And you'd be surprised about how many um, people like this are actually in public schools right now. Um, but you can't keep them out of the public school system because that would be violating their rights. So, 
uh, that could be in a hospital type of um, treatment setting, um, or they could be in a more uh, detention type setting. And when it comes to um, the treatment of juveniles, um, the state, the states, like I said, they, they operate off trauma-informed care. Most of them do. And they just, they're treated way different than, than the adults. It's a huge, huge night and day difference. Uh, a lot of juvenile places are, are more or less a, a daycare. <laughs> that's, 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 for lack of a better word, that's, that's what a lot of them are. They're just a little daycare to keep the, uh, unruly children who, um, you know, can't, can't get along in society and they don't stay there very often. They, they oftentimes get released, uh, pretty quickly. So for example, here in the state of Kentucky, uh, the police, you know, if they go to a call involving a juvenile who's robbed a gas station or something, the police just cannot automatically, uh, take that kid in the cut into custody and take them straight to detention or jail. They have to call what's called a CDW, a court designated worker. And then that court designated worker then makes the decision on whether or not they're going to go to the detention or if they're going to be released back to their parents. So that's kind of a, a backwards way, in my opinion, on how things work. Um, the equivalent to that in the adult world does not exist. If it did exist, uh, that would basically be like an officer detaining an, a, an adult male for robbing a bank and then having to call the public defender's office and trying to get permission to lodge them in jail. That, I mean, most people would say that's fucking crazy. Uh, why the hell do we do that? But a lot of people don't realize that, um, at least here in Kentucky, that's how it's done. Uh, the police just can't arrest a juvenile and take them straight to jail without having the court designated worker involved. And the court designated worker falls under the Department of Public Advocacy, the same people who are public defenders. So a lot of states will operate like that. And so if he has been um, institutionalized for years, that tells me there's some serious issues going on because the, the, the states, they like to try and get the juveniles out of the system as quick as they can. They'll do pretrial diversions and things like that and give them lots of little slaps on the wrist. Um, and, and that goes on and on and on. So the fact that he was institutionalized for years uh, leads me to believe that he has been involved in the juvenile criminal system there in Colorado multiple times and has done things to keep himself locked in there. But as I said earlier, all those things are secret. You can't go look up juvenile records. So it's anyone's guess on why he was actually institutionalized. Um, not much else to say um, for this video. The use of deadly physical force, I think, was appropriate um, and was needed. Now, if you go online and you type in this person's name, Alex Domina, and you look at some of the news articles, uh, it's no surprise that, you know, around some of these more liberal places in Colorado, Denver, and Loveland, and whatnot, the, the news articles are... They're, God, they, <laughs> it's, they, they kind of really piss me off because they're painting it as like, you know, some innocent little kid um, with some mental issues was just uh, targeted by some really mean police officer who was just hell bent on killing them. And that's, that's not the case at all. The video speaks for itself. This officer went in there trying to de-escalate, trying to get some type of peaceful resolve, and this person decided to come at them with a knife and act aggressive and hostile. Left the officer with absolutely no choice whatsoever. If you like what you hear and see, give me a like and a share. If you have not already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.